Live from New Delhi, you're watching DD India News Hour, India's Voice to the World. I'm Anun Bhattacharya. Coming up in the next hour. Republican candidate Donald Trump wins a sweeping victory in the U.S. presidential election, defeats a Democrat nominee Kamala Harris in a stunning political comeback. World leaders congratulate Donald Trump on his stunning U.S. election victory. India's PM Narendra Modi speaks to Trump. Trump tells Modi he considers him and India a true friend. Russia's Upper House of Parliament ratifies landmark mutual defense pact with North Korea. India's cabinet approves infusion of equity of 10,700 crore rupees for working capital in financial year 2024-25 in the Food Corporation of India. Donald Trump claimed a victory and pledged to heal the country on Wednesday as results put him on the verge of beating Kamala Harris in a stunning White House comeback. Our next report brings you more. In the early hours of Wednesday morning, former President Donald Trump took the stage in West Palm Beach, Florida to declare victory in the U.S. presidential race addressing a roaring crowd of supporters in an emotional and unifying speech. Trump, alongside his family and campaign team, expressed gratitude for his supporters and emphasized a vision of unity for the country. We're going to help our country heal. We're going to help our country heal. We have a country that needs help, and it needs help very badly. We're going to fix our borders. We're going to fix everything about our country. And we made history for a reason tonight, and the reason is going to be just that. We overcame obstacles that nobody thought possible, and it is now clear that we've achieved the most incredible political thing. Look what happened. Is this crazy? Throughout his speech, Trump highlighted his commitment to the American people, underscored his vision for a revitalized nation, one united by a common purpose and shared prosperity. I will fight for you, for your family and your future. Every single day I will be fighting for you and with every breath in my body. Trump's gratitude extended to a diverse group of high-profile supporters, from billionaires to pop culture figures and long-standing Republican lawmakers. Notably, he gave a special mention to billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk, calling him a star in American innovation. We have to protect our geniuses. We don't have that many of them. Even in his recent speeches, Trump also used religious language to describe his personal journey and his political mission, often referencing an assassination attempt that took place in Butler, Pennsylvania. Many people have told me that God spared my life for a reason. And that reason was to save our country. Trump's message of unity and hope, paired with a commitment to put divisions in the rearview mirror, resonated deeply with his supporters in West Palm Beach and across the country. As his speech concluded, he left the stage with a promise to guide the country towards a more prosperous and united future. Bureau Report, Dear India. And world leaders congratulated Republican Donald Trump on Wednesday after he won the U.S. presidential election, capping a stunning political comeback four years after he left the White House. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi called Donald Trump his friend and said that he is looking forward to renewing their collaboration to further strengthen the India-U.S. partnership. Among other world leaders who congratulated Trump included German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, British Prime Minister Keir Starmer, EU Chief von der Leyen. Ukraine's President Zelensky said he hopes for bipartisan support for Ukraine from the United States.
This is a magnificent victory for the American people that will allow us to make America great again. Oh, Former U.S. President Donald Trump made a stunning political comeback to the White House on Wednesday, four years after he was defeated by President Joe Biden. The results delivered a clinching victory that included wins even in the swing states. Soon, congratulatory messages began pouring in for Donald Trump after he claimed victory. French President Emmanuel Macron was among the first to reach out to establish a good relationship. President Macron wrote on the X, Congratulations, President Donald Trump. Ready to work together as we did for four years, with your convictions in mind, with respect and ambition, for more peace and prosperity. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, in his congratulatory message, said that the two countries would continue to work together to benefit their citizens. Our messages are clear. Firstly, Germany will remain a reliable transatlantic partner. We are aware of the contribution we make to this partnership and will continue to make in the future. This also applies with regard to the threat that all NATO allies believe Russia poses to security in the Euro-Atlantic area. Prime Minister Keir Starmer said the two allies would continue to work together to promote shared values of democracy and freedom. Starmer was speaking at weekly Prime Minister's questions session in Parliament. Uh, Mr. Speaker, can I begin by congratulating President-elect Trump on his historic election victory. As the closest of allies, the UK and US will continue to work together to protect our shared values of freedom and democracy. And having, having had dinner with President-elect Trump just a few weeks ago, I look forward to working with him in the years to come. Among other European leaders who congratulated Trump included NATO chief Mark Rutte, European Council President Charles Michel and European Commission President von der Leyen. The EU chief said in a post on the X, I warmly congratulate Donald J. Trump. The EU and the US are more than just allies. We are bound by a true partnership between our people, uniting 800 million citizens. So let's work together on a strong transatlantic agenda that keeps delivering for them. While Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky voiced hopes for strong bipartisan support for Ukraine from United States. Zelensky in his message on X said, We look forward to an era of strong United States of America under President Trump's decisive leadership. We rely on continued strong bipartisan support for Ukraine in the United States. On the other hand, Kremlin said that Russia relations with the United States were at historic low. But Kremlin was open to dialogue and would see what happens if Donald Trump returns to the White House in January. This is an internal affair of the United States. Of course, we are closely monitoring all the information flows that come from overseas in this regard. We analyze the words that are being spoken and, of course, we will mainly make conclusions on the issues that are on our agenda based on the statements when they appear and on the first concrete steps. China's foreign ministry called the U.S. presidential election an internal affair and said that it respects the choice of U.S. citizens. Fuzel Ahmed for DD India. Over the course of U.S. President-elect Donald Trump's presidency in his uh, previous tenure, PM Narendra Modi and uh, Donald Trump appeared to foster a relationship that extended beyond formal diplomatic uh, protocol, highlighting a unique warmth rarely seen between a U.S. president and an Indian prime minister in the past. The relationship between the two leaders has been characterized by strong diplomatic ties, strategic cooperation and is evident in their personal warmth which proved to be a key factor in cementing India-US ties. DD India correspondent Raghav Kumar Jha puts into perspective the chemistry between PM Narendra Modi and US President-elect Donald Trump and the impact of their camaraderie on the strengthening India-US ties. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi was among the first world leaders to congratulate Donald Trump on a historic election victory. In a social media post, PM Modi said, as Mr. Trump builds on the successes of his previous term, he is looking forward to renewing the collaboration to further strengthen the India-US Comprehensive Global and Strategic Partnership. 
the prime minister called upon mr trump to work together for the betterment of people of india and the united states of america and to promote global peace stability and prosperity The rapport between India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Donald Trump reflects beyond symbolism. Strong diplomatic ties, strategic cooperation and visible personal camaraderie mark the relationship between the two leaders. Their friendship was showcased in large events like Hardy Modi in Houston in 2019 and Namaste Trump in Ahmedabad in 2020 where they addressed huge crowds highlighting their mutual admiration the ties further as we see Namaste Trump in Ahmedabad was attended by over 100000 people which showcased the personal and diplomatic ties between the two nations and underscored the symbolism of the Trump Modi partnership Let's have a look at those factors which have played a key role in strengthening ties between the two leaders. Both leaders prioritized strengthening defense and security ties, particularly in countering terrorism and addressing regional threats such as those posed by Pakistan. Trump reduced funding to Pakistan on charges of its cross-border terrorism and also because of its support to Taliban in Afghanistan. Their shared vision for a free and open Indo-Pacific led to closer cooperation especially in relation to China's growing influence. This aligned vision deepened their collaboration in defense and security matters including joint military exercises and India's role in the Quad Alliance. PM Modi and Trump enjoyed a personal bond demonstrated by their public interactions at large scale events like Howdy Modi in 2019 and Namaste Trump in 2020. Their camaraderie was widely viewed as a reflection of a strong personal connection contributing to the overall strength of the bilateral ties. During the COVID-19 pandemic, their partnership extended to health initiatives, with India providing hydroxychloroquine to the United States. Later, America supported India's pandemic response. There was substantial improvement in India-US relationship under the previous presidency of Donald Trump. Trump's administration continued to strengthen the US-India strategic partnership, especially in terms of defense cooperation. The signing of key defense agreements like the Communications and Information Security Memorandum of Agreement 2018 and Basic Exchange and Cooperation Agreement 2020 deepened military collaboration. These agreements allowed for increased interoperability between the two countries' forces, joint military exercises and shared access to sensitive technologies. It was under the leadership of PM Modi and Donald Trump that India and US began 2 plus 2 dialogue. In September 2018, India and US held the first 2 plus 2 dialogue. During a 2 plus 2 dialogue in New Delhi, the Communication Compatibility and Security Agreement was signed that gives India access to advanced communication technology used in US defense equipment and allows real-time information sharing between the two countries' militaries. Quad and alliance between the US, India, Japan and Australia was revived under the Trump presidency in 2017. India had signed a letter of offer and acceptance with the US for 24 MH60R Sea Hawk anti-submarine warfare helicopters under Trump administration. India was identified as major defense partner by the United States under Trump administration. Thanks to the excellent personal rapport between PM Modi and Donald Trump, India-US relations scaled new heights and it is geared up to show higher with the election of Donald Trump as the 47th president of the United States. Raghav Kumar Chaudhary's report for DD India. We now invite the dynamic Time for us to take a breather on DD India News Hour coming up after that. Japan's Prime Minister Shigeru Ishiba says he would like to have what he calls a swift contact with Donald Trump German foreign minister congratulates Trump urges Europe to up security spending geopolitics and trade deals
economic challenges amid development. Hard work and the path to prosperity. It's the economy always. Between walkers, money is what money does and says. Supply creates its own demand. Between the bulls, pulls and bears, tears. When supply chains globalization and India rises to the podium. We'll get you centered with the economic brief at 8 p.m. every Thursday on TD India. Welcome back. You're watching DD India News Hour with me, Munman Bharacharya. India's uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi called U.S. President-elect Donald Trump after his victory in the U.S. elections. PM Modi congratulated Donald Trump on the decisive victory and Republican Party's performance. Both leaders affirmed to work together for world peace. Trump says uh, the whole world loves PM Modi. He also said that India is a magnificent country and PM Modi is a magnificent man. Trump told PM Modi he considers him and India a true friend. Trump said PM Modi is one of the first world leaders he spoke to after his victory. And India correspondent Shubendu Ghosh now joins us live from Washington DC. Shubendu, we've heard from Trump, uh, but there's total silence from the Harris camp. When can we expect her to speak? Well, it shouldn't be surprising, Moon Moon, for the kind of result that uh, we have seen, the, the red sweep, uh, the absolutely unexpected debacle of the Democrat Party. They have gone into a huddle as we speak. But today, U.S. time, uh, the expectations are that around uh, 4 p.m. Uh, today, we are in Washington, D.C., local time, 4 p.m. Uh, she is expected to reach uh, her alma mater, Harvard University. This is where she was supposed to be last night uh, when uh, that, that very historic counting uh, process begins. Uh, uh, but she didn't make it. Uh, also, the trends were not very favorable uh, for the Democrats. So uh, today she's expected to reach her alma mater and speak. And uh, it is expected that uh, the speech uh, to concede the elections is going to be delivered, uh, the place where really she really started her professional journey. Hmm. Also, Shabendu, what do we know about the transfer of power or the transition of power from here on? Important question, uh, Munmun. Uh, it is going to be a, a slow process from here on. Uh, now Donald Trump is going to be referred to as the president-elect, who is said to be the next president of the United States. But he's not becoming uh, the next president anytime soon. It's going to take over two months for that to happen. I'm standing right in front of the White House. Uh, and if you can just show uh, uh, some images, it's uh, sunny here, some images of the kind of preparations that are underway. There are different wooden planks of different levels are being put. All of this for the big inauguration day of the new president. Now, that inauguration is not taking place anytime soon. Uh, traditionally, it takes place on 20th of January, which is going to be next year. Uh, before that, uh, if you can just go through uh, the process, uh, the, the uh, formal process uh, that the electioneering will go on. Now, all the results are going to be tallied and verified, especially the postal ballots. Till the first week of December, uh, all of these votes will be verified. Uh, after that, uh, the head of each of the states, uh, of the, uh, the governors mostly, are going to be gathering the electors. Remember, it's an electoral college system, not popular vote, uh, that elects the president. In that sense, the president of the United States has not been elected officially as yet. Uh, we unofficially know that now Donald Trump is the president-elect. It is in December uh, last week uh, that the electors from different states, and they'll together form the electoral college, uh, in January, early January, first week, these uh, electors will vote. On 6th of January, uh, the uh, House of Representatives is going to uh, tally and count the votes delivered uh, by uh, the Electoral College. That estimation we've already done on our side. But officially, uh, that counting of votes will happen on 6th of January. And the House of Representatives will formally announce uh, the election uh, of the new president. And 20th of January is when... Donald Trump will take oath once again as the U.S. President. Yes, Shubhendu, also PM Modi just spoke to President-elect Donald Trump and Trump told PM Modi that he considers him an India true friend. So does it seem that a new chapter in bilateral ties is set to begin? Absolutely, uh, Munmun. In fact, uh, the personal rapport that the two leaders have uh, is going to be instrumental in taking 
uh, both America and India forward together uh, in this uh, century. Uh, if you remember the mega uh, diaspora programs that took place both in India and, uh, and America, there was a Howdy Modi program in 2019, if I'm getting the date right, uh, that's when Prime Minister Modi was invited to the uh, United States in Houston. And Donald Trump was there to host him, and both the leaders uh, took a round of the stadium where thousands of Indian Americans sitting there. Exceptional program, never before it was done for, has been done for a world leader. Uh, so, so that was one. And then when Donald Trump uh, finally came to India, Namaste Trump program at uh, Narendra Modi Stadium in Gujarat, uh, uh, millions of uh, thousands and uh, thousands of people sat to welcome uh, President Donald Trump, and he remembers that as one of the best welcomes that he's ever got in any uh, part of the world. So in that sense, exceptionally good relations at the leadership level. It is also a very crucial time for India and America. Uh, the, the strategic interest, our geopolitical uh, positioning and interest, all of them uh, put India and America on the same path. The technology-driven future that we're talking about, uh, the supply chain reorientations, in all of these, India and America are indispensable partners. Uh, there are concerns about... Uh, uh, trade tariffs and uh, uh, visas uh, for Indian workers in America. Uh, but given that uh, there is a great upswing in the relations between the two countries, great uh, bipartisan support for India, it is expected that uh, new milestones are likely to be achieved under leadership of Prime Minister Modi and President Trump. Absolutely. So we're expecting new milestones going forward in the next four years. Thank you, Shubendu, for joining us from Washington, D.C. Well, congratulating Donald Trump, Germany's foreign minister said Europeans must take over more responsibility for their own security. German foreign minister Anna Lena Baerbock said that this would not be a substitute for the transatlantic partnership, but an investment in common transatlantic partnership in turbulent geopolitical times. Trump has won the Donald Trump has won the election. We congratulate him on this. Germany, Europe and the United States are close partners and allies. Yet, a transatlantic friendship has never tied to one party. At the same time, it is the nature of democracy that after elections, both domestic political conditions and foreign policy relations are readjusted. Germany will also be a close, reliable ally for the future American administration. That is our offer. As in any good partnership where there are undoubtedly political differences, an honest and above all intensive dialogue is more important than ever. Former U.S. President Donald Trump has declared himself the victor of the U.S. presidential elections. The U.S. media has called the elections as well. And joining us uh, with more reactions coming from Europe is DW correspondent Chiponda Chimbelu in Berlin. Chiponda, in terms of reception from Europe, what more can we expect? Thanks for having me. Well, for many here in Europe, a Trump victory is, of course, very disappointing, especially here in Germany. And there's two major reasons for that. There's the war in Ukraine and, of course, what future trade relations between the EU and the US could be. Now, when it comes to the war in Ukraine, Brussels has been able to count on Washington to deliver much needed military aid to Kiev as Ukraine defends itself in the war against Russia. And that is something that could change with a Trump administration. Now, Republicans have been against providing aid to Ukraine, so of course it could mean that the EU will need to step up its efforts. And that, of course, would be very expensive. And of course, there's also the prospect of tariffs. Now, Trump has said he would introduce tariffs of 20% on European goods. Now, that is, of course, something that would especially affect Germany, which is Europe's biggest economy. The U.S. was the biggest export market for German goods last year. Right, Chiponda, how could relations between Europe and the U.S. change then under Trump 2.0? Well, we do know that it won't be a continuation of Biden's policies that EU leaders were hoping for. But we can expect Washington to be cozy with some leaders from EU countries. Now, the most likely to get his ear are Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, Italian PM Giorgia Maloney, and the Polish President Andrzej Duda. And that's because all these leaders have positioned themselves as like-minded Trump allies here in Europe. The only problem is that they do not all have the same agenda. Now, Hungary's Orban would, of course, be emboldened uh, by Trump's victory ideologically. 
but he probably wouldn't use his Republican connections to speak on behalf of European interests. And while Italy's Maloney and Poland's Duda do have their differences with Trump when it comes to Ukraine, um, we, we will need to see whether those leaders would have any sway with Trump um, when it comes to the biggest issues that Europe faces. Chiponda Jimbelu joining us from Berlin. Well, uh, Japan's uh, Prime Minister Shigeru Ishiba says he wants to take his country's alliance with the United States to new heights after Donald Trump claimed victory in the U.S. presidential election. I heard Mr. Trump's victory declaration. I would like to take Japan-U.S. alliance to a new height by having close cooperation. I would like to have a swift contact with Mr. Trump. Now let's take a look at some other stories making news around the world. Apple became the first company to be fined under new European Union's antitrust rules. EU regulators revealed that the iPhone maker had breached the bloc's technology rules. The charge against Apple was the first under the EU's Digital Markets Act, which came into force earlier this year. Thousands of people turned out for Adelaide's annual Christmas pageant in Australia, aiming to bring joy to children. The event has been organized across South Australia since 1933. Event organizers say there were 18 bands. The 40th Havana International Fair began in Cuba, featuring over 800 exhibitors from 63 countries, highlighting diverse sectors, including technology, agriculture and renewable energy. Over 60 countries and 800 companies participated in the exhibition. The first snowfall has been recorded on Japan's Mount Fuji following a record-breaking delay. The appearance of a snow cap on the iconic mountain came on Wednesday and it was the latest snowfall recorded since records began 130 years ago following a particularly warm autumn. Time for another breather on DD India News Hour coming up after that. Indonesia's President uh, Prabowo receives Singapore's Prime Minister Wong in Jakarta. EU official says the bloc is ready to support Bangladesh's interim government and its reform initiatives. Schools closed in Pakistan's Punjab province as the country battles record air pollution. As our ecosystems change, we not only need to amplify our efforts to save them, but we also need to adapt our lives. Today, everything grows here. At an altitude of 5,000 meters, we grow mushrooms, strawberries, watermelon and tomatoes. It's been made possible by the introduction of technology. It's like with stocks. You diversify your portfolio to minimize risk. That's what we're trying to do with the mixed forest too. People's mindset is changing in favor of electric mobility. And I see huge success in the future as well. Same eelgrass is one of the most important elements in the ecosystem along the Baltic Sea coast. It produces oxygen and provides habitat for smaller fish. Welcome back. You're watching DD India News Hour, a recap of the headlines. Republican candidate Donald Trump wins a sweeping victory in the U.S. presidential election, defeats Democrat nominee Kamala Harris in a stunning political comeback. World leaders congratulate Donald Trump on his stunning U.S. election victory. India's PM Narendra Modi speaks to Donald Trump. Trump tells Modi he considers him and India a true friend. Russia's upper house of uh, parliament ratifies landmark mutual defense pact with North Korea. India's cabinet approves equity infusion of 10,700 crore rupees for working capital in financial year 2024-25 in the Food Corporation of India. Spanish military and volunteers uh, moved wrecked cars as they searched for victims following the deadly floods that have killed more than 200 people. At least 89 people remain missing after deadly floods in eastern Spain. 
Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez has allotted $11.6 billion to help victims. On Wednesday, Pope Francis prayed for the people affected by the devastating floods in Spain. Last week, devastated floods had severely damaged infrastructure in Valencia, destroying bridges, roads and rail tracks. EU Chief Ursula von der Leyen said on Wednesday that European Union and the United States have a partnership that is based on common goals of security and opportunity for all and climate action must be seen in that context as a matter of security and of opportunity for both Europe and the United States. As, as President has said in our statement this morning, the European Union and the United States have a partnership that is based on common goals of security and opportunity for all and uh, climate action must be seen in that context as a matter of security and of opportunity for both Europe and the United States. Both Europe and America have suffered in recent weeks and months from the devastating impacts of climate change. We need to protect our citizens from climate risks while working to keep them to a minimum. Thank you. Director of Department of European uh, External Action Service, Paola Pampaloni, met Bangladesh's chief advisor, Professor Mohammad Yunus, in Dhaka on Wednesday. Director Pampaloni expressed the readiness of the European countries to support Bangladesh. She said that European Union is ready to support Bangladesh's interim government in every possible way. The chief advisor of Bangladesh appreciated the gesture and recalled his meeting with European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen in New York. European Union official urged Bangladesh to create more investment opportunities which would create more jobs and increase trade. Transparency International Bangladesh, an anti-graft watchdog, has voiced serious concern regarding the persistent deliberate attacks on journalists, the media as a whole and lawsuits that are intended to harass them. In a press release on Wednesday, TIB cautions that these actions are not conducive to the establishment of an anti-discriminatory new Bangladesh. The watchdog urged the interim government to implement stringent measures against the alarming trend that threatens journalists and the media in order to cultivate a secure environment for them. TIB also urged journalists and the media to maintain ethical journalistic standards and prevent the abuse of their authority. Pakistan's most populated province of Punjab on Wednesday ordered closure of schools due to heavy smog in the city. Authorities have shifted classes to online learning until the 17th of November as the country battles record air pollution. Officials have set up a smog war room to tackle severe pollution. In Lahore, primary schools have been closed as air quality spiked above uh, 1,000 at several areas. Also, half of the staff in public and private offices are now advised to re work remotely. Higher secondary schools will be transferred to online learning in Gurjanwala, Lahore, Faisalabad and Multan. 50% of the workforce, both public and private sectors, are asked to work remotely and meetings will be held on Zoom. Wearing masks has been made mandatory. These four steps are being notified. Tire maker Michelin factory will close two of its French factories in early 2026, affecting about 1,250 workers. After the announcement, the Michelin factory workers protested and burned tires in Western France. Founded 135 years ago, the French company has cited high costs and cheap Asian competition for the closure of its Cholet and Wannes sites in Western France. Michelin's announcement comes just weeks after unions at Europe's largest car manufacturer Volkswagen warned of planned plant closures. Lawmakers from Russia's Upper House Federation Council voted unanimously on Wednesday to ratify a mutual defense treaty with North Korea. Russian lawmakers praised the landmark mutual defense pact with North Korea. Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister Andrei Rodenko praised North Korea for being the only country to publicly support Russia's 2014 Crimea's annexation and 2022 Ukraine annexation. Kyiv and the West said that Pyongyang sent thousands of troops to fight for Russia against Ukraine. For the 
The federal law proposes to ratify the comprehensive strategic partnership agreement between the Russian Federation and the Democratic People's Republic of Korea signed on June 19 this year. The signing of the new agreement is linked to the evolution of the geopolitical situation in the world and the region as well as qualitative changes in the bilateral relations between Moscow and Pyongyang. Indonesian President Prabowo Subianto met with Singaporean Prime Minister Lawrence Wong at the Merdeka Palace in Jakarta. Lawrence Wong is Prabowo's first state guest since he was elected as president last month. The two leaders discussed cooperation in defense, technology and food sectors, as well as the intensifying geopolitical tensions across the globe. Singaporean Prime Minister Wong said that both uh, the countries want to have close ties with America as well as with China, whereas the President of Indonesia emphasized on enhancing cooperation with Singapore. On to news, uh, back home, uh, India's uh, Union Cabinet approved PM Vijay, Vidya Lakshmi, I beg your pardon, a new central sector scheme to provide financial support to meritorious students. Briefing the media in New Delhi, India's Minister of Information and Broadcasting, Ashwini Vaishnav, said that this scheme will empower the youth and the middle class. Today, a new scheme approved a fully central scheme. Pradhan Mantri Vidya Lakshmi scheme. Every student who has a need for financial assistance, if he has a need for financial assistance in a good university or in a good educational institution, if he has an admission, then he will not be able to do this with this idea. He will guarantee that he will not be able to do this with finances. In the case of PM Vidya Lakshmi, there is a very simple ट्रांसपेरेंट मेथड से कोलैटरल फ्री गारंटर फ्री और आठ लाख से कम इनकम की फैमिली है अगर तो उनको एक अच्छे इंटरेस्ट सबवेंशन के साथ दस लाख रुपए तक का लोन बहुत ही कन्वीनियंट तरीके से मिलेगा करीब एक लाख स्टूडेंट्स को कवर किया जाएगा और साढ़े सात लाख तक के लोन के लिए क्रेडिट की गारंटी रहेगी तो Union Minister Ashwini Vaishnav also said that the government has approved an equity infusion of over 1 billion US dollars for the Food Corporation of India. This decision is aimed at bolstering the agricultural sector and ensuring the welfare of farmers across the country. FCI ke operations ka pura scale bad gaya hai. Is bade wai scale ko cater karne ke liye, financial, financial structuring aise karne ke liye, इस साल फेब्रवरी में जो ऑथराइज कैपिटल है फूड कॉरपोरेशन ऑफ इंडिया का वो बढ़ा के टेन थाउजेंड करोड़ से बढ़ा के ट्वेंटी वन थाउजेंड करोड़ रुपीज किया गया था और आज कैबिनेट ने फैसला लिया है कि फ्रेश एक्विटी फ्रेश एक्विटी कैपिटल टेन थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड करोड़ रुपीज का एफ सी आई में इन्फ्यूज किया जाएगा सो दैट मीन्स एस एफ सी आई विल बी एबल टू डू much more than what it has been doing or, and this is in line with what Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi ji has always emphasized that Kisano ka welfare, Annadatao ka welfare amar liye ek top priority hai. India's external affairs minister Dr. S. J. Shankar met Australia's Prime Minister Anthony Albanese on Wednesday in Canberra that they discussed ways to deepen the bilateral comprehensive strategic partnership between the two countries. During the meeting, Jay Shankar also conveyed uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's greetings to Albanese. The minister is on an official visit to Australia from the 3rd to the 7th of November. India's external affairs minister also interacted with members of the Australia-India Parliamentary Friendship Group. He appreciated their warm sentiments for stronger political, economic and people-to-people -people ties with India. Earlier, Dr. S. J. Shankar attended the Rasina Down Under 2024 session in Canberra. He spoke about India's priorities in the Indo-Pacific and opportunities for greater collaboration with Australia as well as New Zealand. Delegates at the International Solar Alliance were introduced to India's innovative agri voltaics model, blending agriculture with solar energy. Visiting a farm near Delhi, they saw how India is maximizing land use for food and energy. 
This approach highlights India's commitment to sustainable growth and balanced development. Delegates at the International Solar Alliance recently experienced India's innovative approach to sustainability. They visited an agri volatex farm on the outskirts of New Delhi in Najafgar. Managed by the India agri volatex Alliance, this farm demonstrates India is blending agriculture with solar energy production to address its growing need for sustainable practices. agri volatex is a dual-use system where solar panels are elevated to allow crops to grow beneath them. This approach maximizes land usage by combining agriculture and energy production. The panels are mounted on raised structures with walkways which enable easy maintenance while allowing uninterrupted farming activities. Crops like cabbage are grown between the panel rows using interspace cropping to optimize land. Advanced software plays a role here too, modeling light and shade patterns to ensure crops receive right amount of sunlight crucial for yield. You continue producing the food and you're also producing energy. And I have actually been discussing with him and saying, hmm, but I think you could even do better. For example, if you used hydroponics, so you, where you can have different levels of crop, and that would reduce the time you actually take to recoup the money. So it is an appropriate technology when properly used, you can actually, uh, he's also employing a number of people. He's producing food, he's producing energy, he's employing people, and then it fades into his other enterprise. India faces a delicate balancing act between food security and energy needs. With food demand expected to rise sharply by 2050, the need for farmland is pressing. At the same time, the land required for solar and wind power to reach net zero goals is immense. In the pursuit of sustainability, India's innovative agri volatex approach offers a promising path by carefully balancing food and energy needs. India can lead the way in sustainable growth, setting an example for the world in achieving food security and energy independence. With Kao Person God of Great, this is Tapush Bhattacharya for TD India from Najafgarh, Delhi. Reserve Bank of India Governor says fundamentals of India's economy are strong. Northern parts of India gear up for the Grand Chhat Puja. Agendas, twists and turns, strategic games. We think all dots are linked. We just need to connect them. Join me every week as I connect the dots to unravel hidden designs in statecraft, mysteries and decode issues that matter to you. Watch Connecting the Dots with me at these times on DD India. Welcome back, you're watching DD India News Hour. Reserve Bank of India Governor Shaktikanta Das said on Wednesday that the fundamentals of India's economy are strong and the macroeconomic indicators continue to be positive. Down the line, I think economic activity remains quite robust. Agriculture sector has done very well. Yesterday, I think the initial estimates of uh, Kharif production came and it's about 6% higher than last year. Services sector is doing very well. Cumulatively this year, the services exports have grown by about 14%. Manufacturing IIP, which had slightly dipped last, you know, in uh, September, 
In October, it has again gone up from 56 point something to 57.5 or so. Service sec services sector PMI which came out today morning, I talked about manufacturing sector PMI. Services sector PMI which was the data which was released at 10.30 uh, as I was sitting here. There also there is an uptick. It had come down, you know, last month from about 57 to 56. Now it is back at 57 something. So therefore, and rest second half of the year is there. So therefore, I would not rush to say, to declare that, you know, economy is slowing down. With Trump having won the U.S. presidency, the S&P 500 and the Dow scaled all-time highs on Wednesday. Global stocks soared and Bitcoin climbed to record high. As the stage is now all set for Donald Trump's return to the White House, the Republicans cobbling up maximum seats in the U.S. presidential election, capital markets around the globe rallied on Wednesday as Bitcoin hit a record high and the dollar was set for its biggest one-day jump since early 2023. U.S. Treasury yields rose to their highest level since July as bond investors bet a Trump presidency could usher in tax cuts and tariff hikes that boost the deficit and inflation. Wall Street stock futures saw a significant boost. Both the S&P and Nasdaq futures surged over 2%, signaling investor confidence. Meanwhile, Bitcoin stood out in the cryptocurrency world, soaring to a record high of $75,397. This marked a 7% increase in just one day, the largest jump since 2023. In currency markets, the dollar index surged 1.5% to 104.97, the steepest one-day rise since early 2023. The jump put pressure on oil and commodity prices as a stronger dollar makes these resources pricier in other currencies. Shifting to Asia, markets follow the trend. Japan's Nikkei jumped 2.5, while Chinese stock hit nearly one-month highs. India's major indices also rallied. The Nifty 50 rose 1.12% and the Sensex was up 1.13%, marking the strongest performance since late September. Sensex is up by 900 points. Yesterday also we saw it going up uh, for the simple reason that uh, the outcome of election presidential uh, result and he's uh, supposed to be, I mean, uh, ma uh, market friendly, corporate friendly and there are many things which currently market feels that uh, under the circumstances, out of the two candidates, he, he was the best choice as far as markets are concerned. In Europe, stocks rose over 1% as they mirrored gains in the US market, supported by the Trump win and Republican control of at least one chamber of Congress. Donald Trump recaptured the White House by winning more than 270 electoral college votes, according to Edison Research projections. In his campaign, Trump promised a 10% tariff on imports from all countries and warned the European Union of potential consequences for not buying enough American products. Tripti Tripathi's report for DD India. Nepal's Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Urban Development Prakash Man Singh has raised concern over climate change consequences in Nepal, demanding climate justice. Deputy Prime Minister attended the 12th session of the World Urban Forum in Cairo, Egypt, where he raised concerns about the climate crisis affecting Nepal. Nepal approved the National Adaptation Plan, which requires 47.4 billion US dollars to implement 64 programs until 2050, while the government can only contribute 1.5 billion US dollars. Deputy Prime Minister emphasized that Nepal requires global support with easy access to innovative adaptation finance arrangements to tackle climate challenges. On day two of the feverous uh, Chhat festival, people celebrated a Karna Puja ceremony where devotees observe a strict fast from sunrise to sunset without drinking even a drop of water. After sunset, they prepare a meal as an offering to Sun Lord, which usually consists of rice pudding made with jaggery. The four day Chhat Puja is an ancient Hindu festival dedicated to Lord Surya, the Sun God, celebrated with immense devotion. India's President Draupadi Murmu has sent her greetings to fellow citizens on the occasion of Chhat Puja. In a message, the President has said, Chhat Puja, one of the oldest festivals of the country, is an occasion to worship the sun. This festival also worships the rivers and ponds, the unique gifts of nature. Through rigorous fasting, 
This festival purifies our minds and souls. This festival inspires us to protect and preserve our environment. On the occasion of Chhat Puja, let us reaffirm our faith in Bhagwan Surya, our rivers and the bounty of nature. May this festival bring happiness in our lives and may our reverence for nature continue to grow. You are watching DD India News Hour. Time now for all the sports action. Arjun Eriges beat a compatriot with it uh, Gujarati after five hours of end-to-end -end action in the opening round of the Chennai Chess Grandmasters in Chennai on Tuesday. Taking the command with uh, white pieces, with it launched his onslaught with a king's pawn opening before Arjun countered with a French variation of the Sicilian defence and uh, came out on top after just over five hours of play. In challengers category, which aimed to provide emerging Indian talent the chance, Ronak Sadwani, Leon Mendonka, V. Pranav and Abhimanyu Puranik are new emerging names in Chen Chess. Novak Djokovic has pulled out of the season-ending ATP finals due to an injury. The 37-year-old Serbian also withdrew from the Paris Masters, which was won by world number two Alexander Zverev. Djokovic won his first Olympic gold medal at the Paris Games in August and clinched last year's ATP finals title by defeating twice major winner Janik Sinner in the final. Sinner Zverev Four times Grand Slam winner Carlos Alcaraz, a former US Open champion Daniel Medvedev and Taylor Fritz have booked their spots at the ATP Finals, which will be held from the 10th to the 17th of November in Turin, Italy. Incoming Manchester United manager Ruben Amorim delivered a memorable farewell in his final home game for Sporting, leading them to a remarkable 4-1 victory over Manchester City. City's star striker Erling Haaland missed a penalty while Victor Gioqueres stole the show with a hat-trick. City initially led with Phil Foden's early goal but Gioqueres equalised in the 38th minute and added two penalties in the second half. Sporting's Maxi Milano Arjuano also scored Moments after half-time, the win hailed by sporting fans as one of Amorim's finest capped a seven-game winning streak, adding a special farewell to his reign. Also in sports, uh, the Indian Premier League 2025 Mega Auction is going to be held on the 24th and the 25th of November in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. The IPL auction is being held overseas for the second consecutive year. A total of 1,165 Indian and 409 overseas have signed up for the mega auction. The list includes 320 capped players, 1,224 uncapped players and 30 players from associate nations. An official IPL release confirmed that and on 31st of October, all the 10 franchises announced their respective player retentions and a total of 46 players were retained. That's it in this edition of DD India News Hour, but do share your thoughts with us on the news of the day. For those in the go, you can get all the latest news and updates from India and across the world on the DD India mobile app. The app is available on both Android and iOS platforms. Scan the QR code on the screen to download now. We'll be back uh, with more news as it breaks here on DD India. This is Munmun Bhattacharya from all of us uh, here in Delhi. Thanks for watching DD India News Hour. Namaskar. As our ecosystems change, we